Hey YouTube, it's Eni, the Not Trader, and I'm back again with another video. So today I'm going to go through my stock watch list breakdown. Now this video is a little bit different. Sorry, I was looking at my phone there. This video is going to be a little bit different to my other videos. I'm not going to go through uh, any charts per se, but I'm going to go through my Excel spreadsheet of my stock watch list breakdown and how I pick my picks of the week. Now you see me make uh, open up this uh, Excel spreadsheet that I make every week and I like, I like to just go through it a little bit more as to what I write down and what each uh, each cell means. So I'm going to pick AMAT for example. So this was my pick of the week um, two weeks ago. No, last week. So the 28th. So the 28th, the date, is all about uh, the date in which I've decided to earmark this stock. So. The 28th of May was when I decided that I was gonna that I was gonna I was gonna put AMAT on my list. The ticker symbol, everyone knows what that is. The ticker symbol is just a shorthand for what the stock name is. So most most stocks have a four letter, a two to four letter ticker symbol that's associated with the stock. The name of the stock. Don't really need to go to that, through that any further. That action. So because I I um, spread bet. I can either buy or I can short or I can go long. I like to put buy. So buy means I'm trying to buy it low and sell it high for profit. While for example, America Eagle, I was trying to short it, so I was trying to buy it, um, buy it high and sell it low for profit. So, um, so I was trying to enter. High. So when you want to short, you want to enter at a high price and hopefully the price drops and you make money as it goes down. Um, chart time interval so this is i i pretty much stick to four hours to daily charts mainly because that's my style of trading i'm a swing trader and i can't really i don't really like getting involved in day trading to be honest because i'm not really good at it and i've got a full-time job so i can't really be checking my trades the way i need to to be successful in day trading so i stick to four hour and daily charts predominantly so i just I just put the, the hour chart that I, I was looking at when I decided to make my decision so that for referral purposes, so if I'm gonna go back and see whether it's daily or four hour chart that I need to look at to, to see the the pattern that I'm looking for. Now reasons, this is just pretty much a note. For the most part, most of my reasons are always the same. I like um, upward trending patterns. So patterns that kind of zigzag but are, are actively trending upwards. Those are my favorite type of patterns to to follow so and uh, stop loss so stop loss is uh, the hard stop the limit that I, the stop that I set myself so if I'm for example if I'm in a buy if I got action a buying action the stop loss I said the stop loss is where I would, I would exit my trade if it was going against me so how much I'm willing to lose before I exit that trade you should always set one before you even think about buying so that you have so for risk management purposes you don't want to lose a lot of your bank by by letting a a, a, a trade that's going against you ride for too long entry is where i would like to enter sometimes the entry point is 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 wherever the price is at the time or it could be a a, a price a little bit higher a little bit lower based on the, whether i think the price is going to um rebound at market open before before going in the direction I want to. So I like the most favorable entry price. And a limit, limit is where I want to take my profits. Now this is really important because I've I've been burnt many times for being too greedy and trying to ride a wave where it's hit its, hit its peak, its, prof, its most profitable peak, but I try to squeeze more profits out of it. So sometimes, so nowadays I like to take my profits a little bit below where I think it's in a peak just for safety measures because the worst thing you could do is have a positive trade right against you because you are trying to be greedy so setting the limit order is always very important as well now confidence probability this is a very important um what, what do i want to call it a field but it's kind of like a arbitrary it's a made-up field confidence probability is basically how confident and i am i am i do i personally feel about this trade so do i do i feel like i'm if do i feel pretty confident that this trade is going to go the way i think it is i put 90 percent do i if i'm not too sure maybe 65 to be honest if it's anything lower than 65 it wouldn't be on my stock watch list in the first place because then it's just guessing and i don't guess so um and then next steps next steps is just just tells me what i want what the next actions i want to take so if i if i'm picking my if I do my pick of the weeks on Sundays, the next step will inform me as to 
do I want to buy upon market entry or do I want to wait for a bit of a, a specific action to take place before I enter such as wait for it to cross the EMA 15 and consolidate stuff like that that stuff means something to me EMA is exponential moving average and 15 to me is 15 day EMA but um, I'll make another video about that anyway so um, I just put little notes here on next steps and R&R &R. so that's the risk to reward ratio now this is really important because after confidence probability this is probably the most important field because this really dictates tells me how much profit I'm, I'm, I could potentially make and how much I could potentially lose ideally you want the number to be greater than one because if you have a one to one risk to reward ratio that means if I could lose 50 pounds I could also have the potential to make 50 pounds which is a which is a good balance act but anything higher than one is favorable but it's, it's not hard and dry and fast because for example AMAT was my pick of the week and the R&R &R was 0 0.77 but because I was 90% sure I was um, I'd rather pick a trade that I'm pretty confident is gonna is gonna go my way and only make a little less profit rather than one that I'm gambling a bit more and and potentially can go against me so confidence probability is probably my first criteria and then R and risk of rewards is my second but ideally you want something like square where look at that the risk to reward is four so that means I can make four times what I'm risking and I've got I'm ninety percent sure it's gonna go my way. Those are the type of ones where it's a no brainer. But um, because I've color coded them, I've I've used a conditional format to color code them. It's quite easy to see visually which which trades are the ones to pick, and the ones that I've highlighted grey, as you can see, are my picks of the week. So just for a few, for referencing myself, I um I I highlight my picks of the week so that I can I can then filter it based on color. So I could just highlight my picks of the week. And P and L, so not every trade that I put in my stock watch list I enter. For the most part, I probably only enter my picks of the week and maybe one or two other trades, depending on how I'm feeling. Right, like right now I'm in, I'm in Square, I'm in AMT, and I'm in BSTI. BSTI, I got in that because I was eight percent sure and it was two point four seven risk to reward, so I was, I was quite confident. So and to be honest, this trade is going my way as well right now. So. But um, URE is the only pick of the week that I've actually exited my trade and I exited, executed it pretty well because I entered at the price I wanted to enter, I exited at the price I wanted to exit and that was the profit. So um, what I'm doing is that I'm, I'm basing my P&L based on one pound per point movement. So sometimes, you, you can, you can, I can, sometimes I might make trades bigger than that, smaller than that, but I'm going to make all my P&L based off of that um, criteria so that there's a bit of consistency. So when I exit AMT, when I exit Square, when I exit BSTI, I will put my P&L in here. And over the coming weeks, I should be able to fill out all of the trades that I did enter, and I could probably, and I can make a um, some sort of graph or table and see how well my picks of the week have done over a certain amount of time. So yeah, um, that was. I hope that made sense. I hope I didn't ramble too much. But yeah, this is my stock watch list breakdown. I'm gonna um, leave a link in my description to access the live doc so you can view it. You won't be able to edit it, but you can view it. So that um, whenever I do make updates to these every week or ad hoc, you can you can see it actively. You can actively see it and you can see it live. So, um, and then you can probably make your own if you would like to, and then share it with me I might, and I can take a look at it and I can tell you what I think of your, your pick of the weeks and your reasoning behind them. So yeah, not trader, signing out.